All right, welcome back. We continue on the Borders and Borders Hotline here. Bob Pompiani with you until 11 o'clock, 412-575-2600. Um, a lot of different tweets also that came in. Gene P says, KD Pomp, why don't sports media come out against NHL goonery and bad officiating like we saw with the Wilson uh, hit? Have you not watched my Twitter line, Gene? I've been all over this for the last several months, going back to maybe last year, but look at my tweets if you don't think I'm coming down hard. I think Mil Mike Milberry's is, is a disgrace for some of the comments he makes. Um, Again, just check my Twitter line. You'll see what I mean and what I think about it. Mark Schwartz says, the play of Carter Rowney has been off the charts. He's been a big boost. Everyone they put in, I mean, this, this team does believe that they have interchangeable parts, guys who can come in and at least give you some energy, give you some minutes. Don't underestimate what Archibald has done. He, he's another guy who came in, he, and he makes his presence felt, even though he's a smaller guy. Let's go to the lines. We got a lot of them. Dave and Clarion's first up. Hey, Dave. Hey, Bob, thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. Uh, I had two comments. The first one was pretty much about Wingle's hit on Wilson. You kind of touched upon there. Cheap shot uh, should be suspendable. And, there. Yeah, absolutely. If not, then don't. Listen, we've seen Bobby Ryan hit Chad Ruedel. Result, concussion. Nothing done. We've seen Matt Niskanen hit Sidney Crosby. Result, concussion. Nothing done. I wouldn't be surprised if Wilson has a concussion. My bet is nothing will be done. And they call themselves the Department of Player Safety. It's an oxymoron. Absolutely. And my second point um, deals with Mike Sullivan. You talk about a guy who has the pulse of his team. You know, he, he's made some great decisions uh, throughout the entire playoffs in terms of putting players in. And, uh, and he potentially had... <laughs> had a decision in terms of putting Matt Murray in there that could have tore that team apart. But he has the pulse of that team there. And, and for me, he's been the difference maker. All the other guys have played well on team. Don't get me wrong, but Mike Sullivan has the pulse of that team, and, and he deserves to be the coach of the year. Probably won't get it, but he deserves well, it. Thanks not, for taking my call. Thank you, man. A good point you brought up. Uh, when you win a Stanley Cup, you're not going to be the coach of the year the following year just because they won't do that. Uh, but, yeah, he does have it. He knew what he was doing in that point. I think it was a message not, not to send to anybody like Marc-Andre Fleury. He's very appreciative of what Fleury has done. Uh, but it was a chance to make a statement, and the statement is, you guys better start playing better as a team in front of your goaltender as well. That was a sloppy effort uh, in Game 3, Period 1, and he changed it up. And, uh, you know, all along, he's a Matt Murray guy, there's no doubt, but he had to pick his spot. He could have done it after some previous losses when Murray was available. Uh, and he chose not to do that. So, um, you know, bottom line is he knows what he's doing, and I agree with you. He has the pulse of the team. Let's go to Bill in Denora. What's up, Bill? How you doing? Hey, Bob. The first caller hit right on the mark, and same as you. But Mike Mulberry, yeah, I'll tell you what, he said he will not think he should set the guy down for what he did with uh, Wilson there on that hit. I'm well, going to listen keep to you on that. Well, keep in mind, this is the same guy, and thank you for the call, who I think it was the 30 anniversary today where he went up into the stands, took a shoe, and hit someone over the head with it. So when you have that guy talking about discipline and supplemental action, you're never going to get what you want with him. He thinks everything is okay. When you hit people on the head with a shoe, that's what you get. Let's go to Ken in Clearfield. Hey, Ken, how you doing? Hey, Bob, how you doing? All right, hey, I think Brian Rust makes a great difference in this, uh, on this hockey team. No I question. said that a long time ago. Thank God he's healthy. I hope he stays healthy. And I just think the team played great today, and I think they're going to win it uh, Tuesday night. I think that's going to be it. Thank yeah. you. Well, here's the thing, too. Uh, thanks for the call. I think if Nashville should put away Anaheim, which I do not expect, I think Anaheim is going to force Game 7 and win Game 7. But if Nashville should win that series, <clears throat> the Penguins will have a huge advantage down the middle at center. Uh, you know, they lost Ryan Johansson. He has been terrific in this entire postseason run in, in Nashville. Uh, they don't have the centers to match up with the Penguins, I don't think, in any shape or form. And I think the Penguins would have a big advantage there. I think the Penguins, as I said at the beginning of this, I, I believe they can win it again and become the first team to do it back-to-back -back years in 20 years. And then, I, you know, with all these injuries starting to pile up, you wondered. But, boy, they've answered it. Every time you think maybe they're done, uh, they have the heart of a champion, and, and we saw it in Game 7 in Washington. Every time they seem to lose a game, they bounce back under Sullivan. He has a 12-2 and record following a loss in the playoffs. It doesn't get much better than that, folks. Let's go to Tom in Duncansville. What's up, Tom? Uh, yes, Bob. I just want to say that the Penguins played really well today, and I want to bring up the hit there late in the game. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, that should be a suspendable hit. He put his elbow out and really cheap shot at him. Yeah, I agree. And it was 7 to nothing at the time. There was no reason to do that unless you're just stupid. And I think Tommy Wingos was stupid. He has zero goals, zero points in the playoffs. So maybe this is what he does. But if they don't do anything, then just, you know, I would blow up the entire department. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to have a, a, a department called that if you're not looking out for guys who sustain concussions. It makes no sense. It's, it drives me nuts. Let's go to Mike in Southside. What's up, Mike? Hey, Bob, I want to take a bone with you real quick. You said that uh, Sullivan switched goalies to, to try to motivate his guys to play better in front of I a think, goalie. I think that was part of it, yes. Well, that's kind of an odd way to motivate somebody, isn't it? I mean, no. you take a goalie out of the Why game they... and throw him under the bus. Flurry should still be playing in the game, and those guys should be playing as hard for Flurry as they do for him. I get that, but the fact is he had that was, that was his opportunity – you know, they had lost a game previously in this series, right? Right. And, and, and they did not switch off Murray. It came after a very sloppy first period, which is why I think the next day they decided go with uh, Matt Murray because, number one, he hasn't played in six weeks, essentially. And number two, to send a message that you got to get better in front. He put a more physical team. He, he, he changed all four lines. The message was sent, and it started there. For so whatever not, reason, so, they, they played so why better. Not send, so why not send that and do, do exactly what he did and leave the same goalie in? Because he wanted to make a change uh, to reinforce he's so, he's so in He's so in love. He's so what in is love not with to Murray. love about uh, Murray? It's he's won Murray a Stanley has Cup. eight wins in his playoff, and the reason they're there to this nine no wins doubt. in his playoff and I've been is saying the same thing. Flurry. I've been saying the exact same thing. My preference was to go to Flurry, not because I didn't think Murray couldn't do it. It's because of what you just said. However, he made the move. He should be credited. It worked. They won that game, and now they won today with ease, and he got a shutout. What's not to like? There's nothing to criticize here. It's all working. Line four we go. That's Sharon in Waynesburg. What's up, Sharon? Hi, Bob. Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. I Thanks for taking that. my call. Thank you. Um, you've already touched on what I really wanted to talk about was that hit on Wilson. I think that guy should sit the next game. I mean, that was terrible. And uh, how about the play of Ole Mata? I think that, that should be Terrific. recognized as well. Oh, no question. That's going to be one of our topics tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown, 1135 on KDK with my panel of Tim Benz, Andrew Filipponi, and Chris Mack. And we bring up the question, why is he so hated at times in this town? I don't get it. I mean, this kid has done every – he is the, the nicest person you're going to meet, number one. He's only 22 years old, number two. He's gone through a whole litany of things physically, from cancer to shoulder surgeries to you name it, he's had it. Uh, and yet all he does is produce in terms of being a steady blue liner. He's not going to – maybe it's, maybe this is the reason. Maybe it's because people don't see – a big physical defenseman. People don't see Chris Letang or Eric Carlson in him. What he is is what he is. He's a steady, reliable guy who had a plus 23 in the regular season. He leads all their defensemen this season in plus minus. I don't know what people want. Uh, and now, you know, he put a couple of shots, got two goals in back-to-back -back games. So, but yet there's this, this feeling out there among some that every time he makes, if he makes one little mistake, it's, oh, he's slow, get him out of there, he can't play anymore. Don't understand it. 412 575 2600. We got to take a break. Back call with more calls right after this on Pittsburgh CW.